the Isole Trinity in Italy's Adriatic Sea welcome 100,000 tourists every year. But many visitors miss some of the archipelago's best attractions, the archaeological sites submerged under the clear waters surrounding the islands. A team of researchers led by Fabio Bruno from the University of Calabria is on a mission to unveil these hidden treasures. Not everyone can access underwater cultural heritage as it requires diving to see it. To make this immense heritage known to the general public, it is crucial to use multimedia technologies that enable visitors to explore these sites and understand their significance. We join the team of the European project Crea Mare as they embark on their mission at one of Italy's most significant shipwrecks. The team includes archaeologists, historians and specialists in computer technology, determined to make the underwater archaeological site beneath our boat accessible to everyone through a highly detailed 3D model. Our dive uncovers the remains of Lombardo, a 19th century steamship used by the legendary Giuseppe Garibaldi. The vessel, which played a crucial role in the Risorgimento movement, sank and was lost over 160 years ago. It wasn't until the early 2000s that Italian archaeologists stumbled upon these historic remains. The project team is creating a digital snapshot of this entire site. Digitizing and creating a three-dimensional model of this wreck will enable those who cannot dive, who aren't able to go underwater, to experience a virtual dive similar to that of real divers. The researchers employ the method of photogrammetry, capturing a series of still shots using a relatively affordable camera enclosed in an underwater case. These photographs serve as the material for generating a detailed 3D model offering an immersive and interactive experience. The goal is to find the most accessible tools and techniques so that underwater archaeologists could be trained to create such models themselves without the assistance from computer engineers. Europe's underwater heritage is rich and diverse, from ancient wrecks laden with precious cargo to submerged cities but it's often hard to access and remains largely unseen. Researchers believe that virtual reality devices will soon become more commonplace. This technology can help build a stronger connection between the public and the underwater heritage, highlighting the need to preserve it for generations to come. Our goal is to enable the development of multimedia applications that allow the general public to both learn about underwater cultural heritage and to more deeply understand the environmental challenges affecting our seas. Museums are increasingly using new technologies to enhance their exhibitions. In Taranto, a coastal city in southern Italy, we visit the National Superintendency for Underwater Cultural Heritage, led by the esteemed archaeologist Barbara Davide. Its new collection of Corinthian pottery dating back to the 7th century BC was discovered 780 meters deep in the Adriatic during the construction of a gas pipeline. These priceless artifacts are safeguarded behind protective glass, but a large interactive screen nearby allows visitors to examine detailed photogrammetric models from every angle. The visitor can zoom into the 3D shape of the object to see in detail the execution technique and the biological organisms that colonized the artifacts during their time on the seabed. In addition, the exhibition features a so-called serious game, a simulation of an archaeological excavation in virtual reality. I begin to explore the seabed. And here I found an amphora, and now I can scan it by pressing a button. When you have the practical experience of underwater exploration, even a virtual one, you derive more pleasure from your visit and you better remember what you saw and what you learned.
such immersive experiences can even help promote more eco-friendly tourism. In Malta, like many other coastal regions, tourists flock to bustling high-rise hotels, cruise ships and vibrant urban nightlife, often missing out on the wonders of untouched natural beauty. Many visit historic monuments like the 5,000 years old Hajar Im megalithic temples. That's an opportunity for Corallo, the European project spearheaded by Malta's ocean ambassador, Professor Alan Dayden. Android robots, virtual reality headsets and other interactive tools are strategically placed at visitor centres to spark tourists' interest in local marine biodiversity and ecotourism. Wow, it's beautiful. Oh, I see a scuba diver and a lot of fishes. Wow. You might have gone on a Mediterranean holiday just for the history, just for the culture, but then you manage to squeeze in that snorkeling trip, you know, a kayaking trip. The project works with local groups that organize eco-friendly sea activities at protected natural sites, looking for the best ways to connect them with tourists. You're here today to help uh, Professor Alan Day doing with his research and uh, how we work with the sea. Uh, also, you're here because we wanted to break another kayak gathering record, and I'm pretty sure we did it. Get Out in Kayak is one of the project partners. We believe in eco-tourism, eco-sport. We want as many people on the sea as possible with as little to no carbon footprint whatsoever. So for us, it's important that we teach people how to respect the sea, how to care for the sea. Ecotourism opens up unique views, inaccessible to others. Tourists come to Malta because we do have beautiful uh, scenery. There are loads of caves that we can go and explore. This way, tourists can be part of the solution, not the problem. I believe a lot in connecting with nature by helping it, just doing simple things like picking up trash from the sea. You need to help the ocean as much as it helps us. I love the sea, I love the sound, and I love the group. I think it's beautiful. This sort of renaissance of awareness about the environment couldn't come soon enough. More than half of the Mediterranean coastline is under concrete already. We need to change course to try to save, obviously, as much as possible of the remaining pristine areas.